I wouldn't actually watch anything. I'm just doing it out of habit. And when you catch yourself doing that, then that's a sign that So on Thursday, I was at my wit's end. And so I journaled a little bit. I just went through the past two days with nothing to show, but really a full log of YouTube watch history with too many videos. I really questioned what I was even here at school for. I mean, did I come here to play? What am I even doing? Do I really want this career path or am I just too deep into addiction to even want to work? Do I really want these pointless videos to be ruining my life? No. So this video is going to go over why YouTube addiction is so real and even possibly slept on and how I've been able to deal with it. Because despite being at my wit's end, I found a way to fix this issue and this weekend has possibly been one of the most productive weekends I've had in a while. So why is this addiction such a big issue? One, because it's actually socially acceptable. Not very often are you going to be able to go on the streets and point out someone who's a YouTube addict. But on the other hand, you can probably point out an alcoholic. And also picture this. If your parents wanted to talk to you and you're in the middle of watching a video and you ask them politely to wait a moment, they would let you. But on the other hand, if you were doing some hard drugs, they wouldn't just let you be like, hold up. You know? They wouldn't let you do something like that. And that's why it's deemed socially acceptable. Another thing is that it's also quite invisible. And as I said, it's kind of hard to identify the YouTube addict out of a group. But eventually, even though it's invisible, it will creep up and actually hurt you in the long run because it actually takes up a lot of time that you could have been using to achieve your own goals. Because if you're not achieving your own goals, the time you spend will be achieving someone else's. Just think about how much the most popular YouTuber earns at the expense of other people's time. Assuming that they are addicted to YouTube because normally I actually like how YouTube is free information. One party gets information and then the other party gets compensation in the form of monetary value. But that kind of takes a turn when the content is just purely entertainment. But that's a discussion for another time. Anyway, the second reason why this is such a big issue is because of the YouTube algorithm that's designed to be a time sink. This is uniquely tailored to each individual in order to get them clicking on the most videos possible and watching as long as possible. And basically having high retention time, which helps YouTube earn the most money. The more retention time a YouTuber has, the more recommended their videos would be because that's what makes the most people spend the most time on the site. So in essence, they're milking your time for money. And if you actually are serious about achieving your goals in life or working towards something, like a project or whatnot, then this should really set off the alarm bells in your head. But as I said before, because this is such a big time sink, if you're not living your own dreams, you're helping someone else live out theirs. And I can guarantee you that you won't be spending that much time on this platform if this algorithm didn't exist, or if you can overcome this algorithm, which I'll explain how I was able to do that in the next section, after this next point, which is basically refuting the point when people say, well, sometimes there are good videos on YouTube that are actually helpful or informational or educational. And to that, I say that there's such thing as infotainment in which someone just watches a YouTube video, even though it's informational, just for fun or the entertainment purpose, which sounds kind of stupid, but I've actually done that myself many times. Just think of a time when you watched a video and after watching the video, you didn't even use the information you learned from it. like. If you watched a video about budgeting and then you don't actually budget, you know? A lot of the times people just watch the video to watch the video and that's not actually a problem. Entertainment is not a bad thing, but too much entertainment could be. Think about it. If you went on YouTube to search a video on how to, for example, cook a certain dish, you would probably use it because you intentionally searched for it. But if your recommended videos just put that out there and you weren't even looking for it in the first place and it got you curious, you probably clicked on it and didn't even use the information. But if you did, good for you. But for most cases and most people, I really don't think that they use the information that is recommended to them because they weren't urgently seeking that information in the first place. So here's the part where I tell you how I overcame this issue. And I discovered this tool that actually helped me use YouTube to how I think it was intended to be used. And that is Distraction Free Tube. It's basically a tool that can do things like hide your YouTube feed. So like your recommended page, you just hide that out. Disable autoplay, the trending tab, your recommended videos while you're watching a video, basically the related videos that show up on the screen after the video is done, the sidebar, even the comments, and whatever can distract you on YouTube. They can disable all of that. And it's also customizable, which is the great thing about this tool. Not only is it versatile, but you can also tailor it to your own needs. Because I actually enjoy the comments, but I chose to disable it because I feel like it wastes too much time because when you read the comments, you kind of want to pause the video so you can read some of them. And also I feel like I want to form my own opinion about what I'm watching instead of going into the comment section and have an echo chamber full of ideas that makes me feel like I've become a sheep sometimes. And that's probably why meme culture is a thing and everybody says the same things when it's a meme. 
without certain aspects of YouTube, basically YouTube's algorithm, the end of video recommendations, your recommended feed, without these things, I feel like I spend a lot less time on YouTube, but it also doesn't feel like I'm watching very little YouTube because if I need a video or if I wanted to watch a video from a certain channel, I can just go search for it. So it feels like I'm being a little bit more intentional with how I'm using this platform. And that saves me a lot of time and basically mindless watching from clicking from one video to the next. Like for example, if I wanted to learn to cook a certain dish, I wouldn't be distracted by a meme video or a recommended video from another channel or from previous things that I've watched that have nothing to do with cooking. And after watching that video, I won't be pulled away from other videos about how to cook other things that look visually appealing, but it's not something I would ever cook. Basically, it stops me from watching anything that I didn't actually intend to watch in the first place. Because I actually have a habit of just clicking a new tab, control T, and then just hitting the W, I mean, and just hitting <laughs> the Y button to go to YouTube and then after that I just click a video that's recommended because I just saw it but when I open a new tab now and hit YouTube there's nothing there and I actually just close the tab straight away because I actually have nothing to watch so I feel like if this recommended page didn't exist then a lot of the times that I go on YouTube I wouldn't actually watch anything I'm just doing it out of habit and when you catch yourself doing that then that's a sign that you should probably get this tool and try it out and you're probably addicted just a little bit I mean, I wasn't completely debilitated, but I had a two solid days with no actual work to show for it. And I feel like with this, I actually have a little bit more time, a lot of, a lot of time to do the things that I want to do, like run more, go to the gym more. Well, I still go to the gym a fair bit, but go to the gym and get my work done consistently and have enough time to sleep early and all that stuff without feeling like I'm in a rush all the time because this is an infinite time sink because of the YouTube algorithm and that it's basically my message to you, and I hope that you found this helpful. Well, to sum up the video, I basically said that I got to a point where I knew that my YouTube habits were not very good, and I wanted to take control of what I actually intend to watch, and I figured out how to do so, and now I've actually caught up to my work and had the most productive weekend in a while. So that's a TLDR, or didn't watch, not didn't read. I also got this video out in time, and I filmed it a day before I released it, so that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe with post notifications on so you can see more videos from me whenever I upload them. Hopefully I'll be making more useful videos from now on like this one so that you're not just clicking for no reason. Okay, that's about it. See ya. And after watching that video, I won't be pulled away from other videos on how to cook other things, on how to cook other th on how to cook other th that, about how to cook other things Clicking a new tab, control T, and then just hitting the W, I mean, and just hitting <laughs> the Y button to go to YouTube, and then after that.